Hello, Floss Tube. I'm Jules. Thanks for coming back for another video. Um, thank you to all the new subscribers who have jumped on lately, um, especially all those who ask me questions about stuff. I do appreciate that. I'm a little bit behind, um, but I am going to catch up. I'm just a couple of days behind, so no, not a big deal. If I haven't answered your question yet, I will. New big deal. Um, what day is today? February 20... First, I think the first 21st it's Wednesday night I'm gonna release this video Thursday morning as is my new routine uh, because it just is working out for me really really well you notice behind me I've got um, in very high-tech and professional looking framing I've got some pictures of some of the projects I'm working on right now uh, that is a pot carry shop um, which it's kind of a zoomed in look but and it's the colors are slightly off, but that's Pop Carry Shop, and then that's my Stormtrooper piece. So I'll be showing you guys uh, both of these, my progress on them this week because I did get some work done. Um, I also made notes. I made some notes this time. Um, anyway, it's my weekly floss tube update. Thanks for joining me. Um, my accent's coming out a little bit this today, just a wee tad, maybe. Um, when I get tired and when I kind of am countrified when I'm at work, when I talk to some folks that bring up my accent, my accent stays for the rest of the day. So it may or may not stay, but if you hear a little bit of an accent, I did grow up in Georgia, so that's what happens there. Um, I got a ton of stuff to tell you guys about in terms of after all the stitching stuff, and some of it is stitching, because I went to the stitching store uh, this uh, week and I'm super happy about that. Um, got some good uh, fabric, and I'll tell you guys about that in a little bit. Uh, got some fish drama, uh, got some, uh, got a lot of Olympic stuff going on. Just craziness. But let's just go ahead and start off with cross stitch stuff, um, because that's why we're all here today. And that's what I want to get to um, when I finish this video. I want to get to that. So let's start with a little bit of E Pluribus Unum. All right. So if you notice, I've got out done at the very bottom. I got, so I did pretty much finish this up. Um, and then I ran, well, I didn't run out of thread. That's the sad thing. I didn't run out of thread. So this takes gentle art thread I forget which number it is. And uh, I basically came across a, and when I look really closely at this, for the most part, the color is pretty consistent. And I looked at a skein of the floss that I had, and it was a lot of inconsistency on that particular um, uh, uh, skein. So I was like, oh man, I, I, what happened? I need more, I need more floss. So when I went to the stitching store, or a stitching shop, excuse me, a stitching shop, um, I went ahead and uh, I got some more of those while I was there. And then I come to realize that they actually is, in, you know, intentionally supposed to be sort of a mix of different colors. So I'm not going to worry about it going forward. I'm not going to be too particular about it. Um, but I can jump back into this piece and get going. This is, I want to say, um, 32 count, maybe? 32, 36 count linen, something like that. I forget. People are asking me again about my, my fabrics and stuff, and uh, to be honest with you, I just, I don't remember on this one, but it's linen, so, but it's really nice. And I like it. And look how much fabric I'm gonna have, because I didn't give myself proper borders. Oh well. Say lovey. Lovey. Um, all right. Over there. What should I show you next? I'm going to show you the baseball piece next, even though you're not going to really be able to tell too much has changed. Um, I do want to keep working on this one. Uh, all right. I pulled it out. Oh, here it is. I pulled it out and looked at it. But so I like doubled the number of stitches that I had gotten done. So wee woo wow. So I got a bunch more done. I just filled in some down here and then I got all that bottom section done. And I mean, it was easily minimum of a couple hundred stitches. That's good, right? That's good. Yeah, anyway. So I'm still working on it. It's still stiff as a board. I'm still working with it, but we all know how painful a pop curry shop was in the beginning and it got better. So that's good. Okay. I was going to put it down here, but I don't know what happened to the bag went in, so we're going to put that right there. Um, what else is going on here? 
let's show you a pop carry shop. Let's just jump right into that. Um, pop carry shop is right home. So there you go. So if we're looking at this, basically I'm just, I'm like, actually I'm down to about here. So I'm almost halfway down on this left column here, this left side, but I'm doing sort of the funky reflection off of the window of the cab here. And, uh, but it's coming along, coming along nicely. Very happy with it. And yeah, so that's, that's the bottom of the page there. So you can see I've got some stuff to fill in here and there and whatnot, but I'm getting close to it. I'm not going to finish it this week. Um, I'm not going to be able to finish this page, but it's getting, it's getting close. It's going to be finished in March. That's for sure. But, um, and as I've been working with it, I mean, this top part is really starting to soften up. That's like, that's one of the best things about working on these full coverage pieces is softening up the fabric as you go. It's kind of a mark of progress and uh, I like it. I like it a lot. All right. I had rainy water we place here and I haven't really gotten too far. I don't want to leave. <sighs> Should I leave the hoop in? Do you guys like, do you guys care if I have the hoop in or not? I mean, in some of these things, I feel like it's a good idea to take the hoop out. You get a better perspective of the whole thing. By the way, cross stitching t-shirt tonight is eat, sleep, cross stitch. That's what I'm going to do. Except I'm going to eat, then I'm going to cross stitch, and then I'm going to sleep. So, and then I'm going to wake up, and then I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to cross stitch. So, it's all good. Um, so, let me just show you Ready Water Replaced. Let's just look at this as an example. So, this is hoop in. Wait, where is it? I can kind of see it. So, that's it with the hoop in. I don't think on this one it really matters so much, because I've only gotten a little bit done. I got it's like one night's worth of progress um, up here. So, you know, a couple hundred stitches up in this general area, having this tower kind of fill out a little bit here. So, but, but if you guys prefer me to take the hoops out for my cross stitch, if you have a, a strong opinion about that, either way, just let me know. It's not a big deal. I mean, I'm just being a smidge lazy about it. But also, if I leave the hoop in, I'm more inclined to work on it tonight. And I have things going on tonight, which I'm going to get to in just a second. Well, or maybe a few minutes, but, um, all right. I did get some work on Stormtrooper here, playing Weather Girl, trying to figure out where my hand is. So I am, I am up in this section here. So it doesn't look like a whole lot right yet, right yet. You can tell I'm Southern, right? Right yet. I'm fixing to show you. All right. So here it is. Is that right? Wait a minute. <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what I'm working on. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I filled in a bunch up and down this row here. So it's coming along. It's just hard to see because it's just a light color. Can you guys see that? I don't know. I got to look too. All right, because I filled in all this down here too. So I've got quite a lot done. I've got the majority of the first page is done. But <sighs> still working. Still working. But anyway, so that's like that's like this part up here. There's just a little bit more color than you can see. So that's what I'm working on. It's coming along. It's coming along. All right. Just cram it and stuff it. All right. Uh, all right. Oh, runny row. Runny row, runny row, runny row. Runny row. Uh, all right, I did get some more progress done on this, and I actually left a, a floss strand out, so you guys are going to see some floss. All right, can you tell where the change is? Um, I'm like looking at it going, I can tell. All right, so what I did was I just, I went ahead and did across, ah, come on, Jules. Um, I did across this whole section right here. There was a lot of stitching, and then started down here. So then I'm just going to do this next. So, but that's coming along. Ronnie Rowe, Market Square Tavern. Ronnie Rowe Designs dot com or dot net. I'm not sure, but just Google Ronnie Rowe Designs. R I N N I E R O W E Designs. D Z I I don't know how to spell designs. It's all good. All right, that's Ronnie Rowe. Old World Map Two. Now, I'm going to leave this one in the hoop as well and show you how far I've gotten. We're just going to show you in the hoop first. 
So, uh, as we see, so I got a little bit more done here, but really what I did is I did a bunch more out here. I filled in a little bit up here, did that across there. I really didn't get a ton done. Um, I'll, show, I'll tell you why here in a little bit, but anyway, I was, um, I was watching a movie last night and I was trying to work on this and I ended up watching the movie more than I worked on this, but I did fill in a little bit more here and there. It's just very, it's like every time I do a new page, I, I end up doing it a different way and that's fine I mean I've got like 230 pages to do so I'm sure at some point I'll run out of ver varieties of you know variations of ways to do it but here it is so far anyway a little loopy tonight a little loopy feeling good feeling better my neck was all messed up over the weekend thank you for all your well wishes um, it took a like like a huge thing like to be pushed down into my uh, upper back in order for it to loosen up finally and make me feel better so but all oh, the perils of getting older right guys we all know what that's like I was like where's my next piece that was it so what did I not work on this week almost everything all right so let's talk about because you guys are going to be asking me about Reaper. We're changing course on Reaper. Um, so there's three things that I went to a stitching shop. So Saturday, got up early and, um, well, early. I didn't get up early to go to the stitching shop. I'm up hours before they open. Trust me, I'm like, open! Open. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, went in there and got three... Um, new pieces of fabric and uh, basically um, what we're doing with our three new pieces of fabric is I'm restarting Reaper uh, and the reason again to and I don't even have Reaper to show you I always forget that I don't have Reaper I can't find Reaper Reaper is basically a very scary skull head and um, it's for a friend who loves Halloween and so it's a very scary one and I was using a very tiny um, 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 fabric count. You know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, what it, what I'm saying is, is that it was like, I was doing two over one with like a 25 count at least. It might've been higher than that. It might've been 28. I'm not hundred percent sure. I don't remember exactly what fabric it was, but gotta say that it just, it wasn't working for me. Um, I, I, I could have done one over one, but, or one over two. I think I was doing one. I think I'm doing two over two. I could have done one over two, but I just, I wanted more, co like, I wanted more coverage. So the solution to that was just basically getting different fabric. And so for that, I honestly, I mean, it's kind of funny, but I just went with um, plain antique white 18 count Ada. Uh, primarily just because it's just easy to work with. I know I can get, I know I can stitch two over, two over one with this one, and it'll be a little bit bigger than the original pattern was gonna be, but no big deal. Let's see, what's the dimension? 17 by 20. So the pattern is, well, it is gonna be this way. The pattern is like 14 by 17. So I actually didn't even realize that. That's gonna look awesome in a picture frame, isn't it? That's gonna be so cool. But anyway, so I gotta restart it, and um, I need to regrid it. And we're going to get to that in just a second, as far as gritting. Um, but anyway, so that is the new Reaper. And it doesn't matter that it's antique white. The full coverage with the dark colors are going to cover up all the white. And I'm going to make sure that when it gets framed, that it also like covers up all the white. Um, whether I do matting or just do the frame right up against the, the pattern, um, you know, it'll be fine. It'll look, it'll look just fine. So... There's that one. I need to make sure everything goes in the proper bag. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Um, all right. So then, my next thing, stitching shop, guys. The stitchingshop.com. There's their phone number. They do an awesome job with fabric. Um, everything is cut exactly the way you want it. Everything is surged awesomely. Um, no complaints ever. With all my projects that I've done, they do a magnificent job. They are awesome. Um, all right. Uh, so this is the Dachshund piece. This is the one where I have the Ada fabric. I got it from Gecko Rouge. Fantastic 
pattern, beautiful. The Ada comes directly from France, from the Ada factory itself. So the, the colors of the floss are vivid and they're wonderful. Guys, you kind of cheaped out on the fabric. You know, I, the, the Ada that I got, and maybe this is, and, and folks, my friends from, um, from the UK, please tell me. I mean, maybe that's how some of the UK fabric is. I don't know. I really don't. But it, it just wasn't, it was very thin. And I was worried that I would damage it in the stitching process. Um, I can be an aggressive stitcher sometimes. But um, I just, you know, it just didn't feel good. I just, even even my super stiff 14-count um, Ada that I use felt far more comfortable than the other piece. So I'm like, you know, if I'm not if I'm not enjoying stitching on a certain fabric, I need to switch. And um, so I switched to, again, 18-count Ada. And again, because it's going to be a full coverage piece, it doesn't matter that it's antique white. So I did the same exact fabric for the Reaper uh, that I'm doing for the Dachshund piece. And so, and this one's actually not too big. It's only, um, let's see, the pattern's going to be about a 12 by 15 when it's all done. Actually, I think it's 15 by 12, um, which is really tiny. And so I'm like, why have I not started that? I need to start that. Well, I did kind of start it. I started on the other fabric that I didn't like, um, but now I can restart it. So maybe, maybe I might have some stuff going on this week. We'll see. We'll see. You know how it is. Life gets crazy and all your well-laid plans go to waste. Should be on a t-shirt or something, I think. Bumper sticker. All right, that's back in the bag. All right, last up, Boba Fett. So I'm going to start the Boba Fett because my husband really wants it done. He's like, I want you to do that one rather than the Stormtrooper one first. Here we go. Stormtrooper one. Here. Um, but, uh, so I got the fabric for it. And because this one is not a full coverage piece, and I don't have its picture here, it's not full coverage. So I got a, let's see, what did I get? I got, I got Ada again. I did. Um, I got a 14 count. Um, it's called Touch of Gray. And the piece is sort of a blue, blue grayish look to it. So I thought this one might be good. But look, it's really not that big. I mean, what am I thinking? These are small projects, right? Let's see. It's a perfect square. It's about 16 by 16 when it's all said and done. And like I said, it's 14 count. It'll be a lot of fun to do. I think this one's going to look a lot like um, that Darth Vader piece that I did last year, roughly about a year ago, that I was doing for a friend of mine that was like the the helmet of Darth Vader, but it was made up of all the different um, ships and all these different things. And, and, you know, Empire ships, dark side ships. Is my camera doing okay? It's looking weird. All right. Maybe it was me. Maybe I was skipping frames. Because it looked like my camera was skipping frames for a second there. I'm looking at myself. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, it was weird. If it cut, I don't know why it would have cut. Because I got the battery plugged in. Because the phone keeps wanting to die on me. But everything should have been fine. I was just taking a picture. Oh, maybe I got a text. That could have been it. Or an alert. That may have been why it looked like that. But nothing popped up. So... Um, all right, so we're going to use this piece to discuss my gridding, or my lack of gridding right now, let's say that. So I'm going to show you, I started gridding last night, and I need to grid a fair bit because, like, the Boba Fett kind of starts up here and then spreads down, so, like, I'm not even, I might start stitching around here, I don't even know, but I gotta, I'm going to have to grid almost this whole thing, at least half of it, before I get started. Um, but I was seriously having a problem gridding last night. Um... We actually found one of my pairs of glasses, which is absolutely ridiculous. It was my like three-year-old progressive lenses that I had that were great when I got them. But when I put them on last night and I was trying to use them for um, gridding, uh, didn't work so well. It didn't work so well. And the good news is that my husband and I have a couple's vision test tomorrow. <laughs> We just, we, he just, uh, I'm going to go see his uh, optometrist and uh, for the first time. And so we actually just made our appointments back to back so that we could go together. And um, so it's just, so I'm calling it a couple's vision test and get your glasses date. Get your glasses. So anyway, so I'm going to go see how my eyes are doing tomorrow and want to get some new glasses. So I'm going to need some 
something that I can see up close. My reading glass is better. And for those of you who say, just go get a pair of cheap glasses. Um, I have an astigmatism that prevents me from using just your pick up, uh, pick up off the counter, use those reading glasses. It gives me ocular migraines every time I, I try to do that. So um, I don't want to do that. That's not fun. <sighs> so going back to Boba Fett real quick, <clears throat> actually going back to the Reaper. So that fabric I have for the Reaper. Um, so I've got nice fabric. So what I'm going to actually do is see if I can't use it to stitch some of my Star Wars cross stitch patterns. That would be cool. Like I could use it for the R2. I might even use it for the Yoda one. So, but I, since I have that, I think I might be able to stitch a couple of different things on it and have it come out pretty decent. So we'll see. That was my Christmas present from the hubby. So it's all good. It's all good. Um, all right. Got to whip out my notes here. One last cross stitch bit of news. Somebody made a comment on um, one of my more recent comments, um, directed me to a new website uh, that is called shinysuns.com. And uh, it's a newer cross stitch website. Now, apparently, they've been doing designs for many, many years, but the website definitely looks new. It's not fully developed yet, everything's not on there yet, but it is a. Um, it is definitely it's a nice website and uh, they have a lot of really nice patterns on there. Uh, I encourage you guys to take a look and see if there's anything on there that you like because what I really like about it is that for people who want to try full coverage but don't necessarily want to do one of these crazy gigantic pieces, their pieces are a lot smaller. So they're more like, you know, your 12 by 12s or things like that, or even maybe even a little smaller, but um, the design looked great uh, and they have artists that work with them. And the cool thing is, is they're from um, North Canton, Ohio, which is very close to where one of my best friends grew up uh, in Canal Fulton, Canal Fulton, Ohio. So that's pretty funny. Um, and of course, I, I wanna go to Canton one day because um, Pro Football Hall of Fame would be cool to go there sometime, but uh, anyway, so, but that's, that's my last little bit of cross stitching. So if you're for the cross stitching, you don't have to stick around for the rest. We're just going to chit chat about some little stuff. Um, okay. Dogs are barking. I hear sirens going by. Crazy night, crazy night. Um, all right. Saw Black Panther. Awesome. I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, it is my second or third favorite Marvel movie. I'm trying to decide. Um, it might be my third. Um, my first is the first Avengers. Um, just because of when I first saw that in the theater, I still remember seeing that in the theater and how amazing I felt and how awesome that was the first time you brought like all the superheroes together to do stuff. That was special, and I really, really enjoyed that an, an awful lot. Far more than I have enjoyed the rest of the Avengers movies, but um, Black Panther is definitely second or third there. Uh, the one that ties it is uh, the, the latest Thor movie. Uh, I don't even remember what it's called. Thor, oh, Thor Ragnarok, that's what it's called. Um, and we actually bought that on Amazon um, and watched that again last night. That's what I was watching when I was trying to do my... Old World Map 2 and I ended up watching the movie far more than I cross-stitched and um, I just love it. It's a lot of fun. It's a uh, very, I don't know, kind of has a 19, 1980s feel to it a little bit, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it, but Black Panther was fantastic. Um, I'm really looking forward to see how they integrate those characters in with the Marvel Universe and really looking forward to the next um, to Infinity War coming out. So, but we're also, we're really looking forward to seeing, let's see, we've got Ready Player One. And if you kind of like video games and you like the 80s or whatnot, if you haven't read this book, you need to go run out and read this book right now. It is fan freaking tastic. It is awesome. Um, but they're making a movie about it. Steven Spielberg is directing or producing? I can't remember. He's one of, he's Spielberg's involved. And um, my husband and I are just gaga over this. We just can't wait. Uh, to uh, to watch that. Um, I've already forgotten the other two. I've already forgotten the other two. Oh, um, Pacific Rim, the second Pacific Rim movie. That one looks good too, so I'm kind of excited about that one. And then I'm just going to forget the third one. I can't. I'm not going to be able to remember it. But um, that's why I rely on my husband to actually like 
tell me like, all right, when are we going to the movies? And he always buys the tickets in advance and whatnot, so we don't have to worry about anything. But <sighs> speaking of the husband, bees are going great. Um, he went down and checked on them last weekend. Three of the three of the hives that we have down there, and I, honestly, the three hives that were um, running when the season ended are still going, and that is fantastic. They have continued to build upon themselves and strengthen their numbers and blah 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 blah. Anyway, um, they're just they're just doing they're just going crazy, and that's fantastic. So we're we're hoping we get five, maybe six full hives running this year. And, um, it's, it's just funny because we, we have more and more people asking us about our honey. Um, we really don't have any to sell that I know of, um, anymore. We, um, we have a little bit held back for ourselves, but we just got, I mean, it's such good honey. We got, you know, all of it went away and, uh, everybody wanted it so much, but anyway, uh, but they're doing great. And, um, so yeah, things are going really, really well with those dogs are all fine. We had a funny thing. We tried to, um, we keep every once in a while, we try and bring the little dachshund Coco, or as I like to call her, what, what, um, what, what, uh, always wants to run upstairs and steal cat food. Which I'm in the room where, Mer where Mercury, the cat likes to hang out and where his food is and whatnot. Um, and, uh, Coco slash what, what always loves to run up in the morning with my husband. He's getting ready for work, try to come up and steal the food. And, uh, sometimes the cat is just like not having it. So he'll chase him into a corner and Coco will start screaming and like, oh my God, you know, whatnot. And so what the weird thing that's been happening is for whatever reason, the other dogs have been kind of, uh, well at night when we go to put everybody up, everybody, like everybody's paired up at night. And so it has been that, um, uh, Fargo the Chihuahua and what what the Dachshund have a big huge kennel to themselves but for whatever reason lately Fargo has decided that he doesn't want to sleep in that cage he has picked the cage that the Golden Retriever Zuzu likes to sleep in and it crowds that area a bit and so sometimes I'll put Zuzu in with what what and it just it's it's family drama basically and um, so we were kind of like, well, you know, well, why don't we just try and bring what, what up again with us and have her sleep in the bedroom and, um, and just see how it goes. And I, I think it's been long enough since the last time we tried it that we forgot how it went. And so we felt like we could try it again, but it doesn't work. <laughs> um, because the cat basically likes to play mainly with the puppy dog and, I don't know what time it was. It could have been 11 or 12 or whatever. And what, what was sleeping under the bed, um, we can't have her sleep with us just because she's, she would be constantly in our faces and whatnot, but she's under the bed and she's trying to sleep. And then all of a sudden I just hear this, you know, and I, and it's right next to where I sleep. So I roll over and like the dog is like up against the corner, like trapped and the cat's like this close and just doing this and the dog's freaking out. And I'm just like, Mercury, come on, man. And um, so I took, I took, I had to take what back downstairs and let her safely sleep the rest of the night. I don't think, I, you know, the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? She's not going to get any sleep because the cat's going to stalk her all night. So let's not do that. But it was, it was worth an attempt. It would be great if, if it could happen, but I think the cat likes to antagonize the dog. I think he really enjoys it. So, um, all right. What else is going on? Um, all right. Two things left. We're going to talk about the fish and we're going to talk about the Olympics. So the fish. Good news, bad news. Um, I still need to upload my videos on my fish channel. <clears throat> I do have a fish channel. Fish channel. Um, and it... Uh, so I'm very sad. One of the clownfish jumped out and died. And it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, so I've been having issues with my pH in my tank. And one of the things that can affect pH in your tank is how much air is circulating over the water. So what I've been trying to do is I have a top for the tank that doesn't completely cover it, but covers it up about 90% of the way. I take that off during the day while the air is circulating and try to get some air in. Then at night I put the top back on, keeps the heat in and um, keeps the fish from jumping out, theoretically. Well, Yesterday, basically, when we got home from work, my husband found one of the clownfish out of the tank dead. And I was just totally so upset about it because 
those things are so dang cute. And I feel like I need another one now just because the clownfish are usually, they like to pair up. So, um, so I have one by himself. So I just need to find at least one other clownfish, maybe two, just to hedge my bets. Um, but what I did today was my husband, um, was like, you gotta go get this plastic grid stuff. And it's basically, it's eggshell or egg crates. So it's like, um, it almost looks like a gridded, it's a gridded pattern, but it's made out of plastic and it's just kind of, it's like raised like that much. And it just has like, it's just gridded. So there's like little squares cut out like all throughout it. And so we just basically cut it to fit the top of the, um, the top of the tank and whatnot so that theoretically nothing can jump out anymore. Anyway, but the, the emerald crab have been doing fantastic. And um, there is a spot now where there used to be a bunch of algae. There's a bare spot now where there used to be a bunch of algae. So definitely they're working. They were just working more um, when the lights are off and when I'm not watching. As soon as I come over, they like totally skedaddle out of view. And um, they're very, very shy. So, But they're definitely working really, really well. We're actually going to a, um, a saltwater reef show this weekend. Uh, it's called reef stock and um so it's a bunch of different uh saltwater aquarium uh companies and things like that that'll be there and uh, i just want to look around just want to walk around look around and see what they have and because um you know I, i'm trying to get more educated and learn and learn more but it was funny because after this last thing when the um the fish died my husband was like that's it that's it this tank this tank is cursed that we're done with this tank we're just done and I was like, what do you mean we're, we're just done? He's like, we got to get a bigger tank. <laughs> and I love him so much. <laughs> He's so awesome. Um, the, the theory is, is that the larger the tank you have and the larger the water supply or the larger the water volume, the better, the easier it is to take care of issues. And the easier it is to take care of the fish and the coral and the water because things don't change very quickly. When you're dealing with a smaller volume of water, temperature and pH and salinity and everything can change a lot faster but I really want to try to get this tank back to where it should be and I feel like we're turning the corner with the emerald crab and now that we'll put the egg crate, egg crate stuff on top the fish won't jump out you know I'm learning I'm making mistakes but I'm learning so hopefully that's good last Olympics have you guys been watching the Olympics holy cow um all right, I'm not watching everything because there are certain things I'm just not that much of a fan of. Um, I'm normally not a big ice skater or figure skater person, but um, I did watch the men's individual when Nathan Chen had his horrible short program, but then his open program was just amazing. Um, but there are a few things that really stand out to me. First, number one, tonight. You guys, you guys are gonna. This is already gonna happen by the time you see this. But I'm very excited um, for the women's hockey team uh, gold medal match tonight against Canada. Canada has been kicking our butts for years now, and is it time? It's time for another miracle on ice. I mean, it's not technically a miracle because we have a really good team and we're like the second best in the world. Um, but if we beat the Canadians, it would be like amazing. So I'm gonna watch. Please, that would be awesome. Um, did you guys see that uh, South uh, Korean, um, what was it, skeleton guy? With the, he had an Iron Man helmet on, and uh, he like totally like blew everybody away in the skeleton competition, and like won by like this amazing margin. And his whole country is like, you're amazing. And so, I mean, you want to talk about a national hero? That's pretty awesome. Um, also on the ice, did you see the uh, the bobsled, the two men bobsled, uh, the guys bobsled? Um, the, uh, the the tie for gold, the German-Canadian uh, tie for gold. I was, I was totally watching that, just, you know, just watching as part of the thing. And um, so the Germans come down, and I guess, you know, the Germans are very good at bobsled, and they hadn't um, won. This, this particular pair, I guess, hadn't really won anything. Everybody else was always winning things over them, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But they came down second to last, and they were in first place. And basically... Uh, the Canadian team was going to have to have this great run because I think they total all four of your runs and then they do it out to like a hundredth of a second. And so they needed to beat them by like, a, I don't know, like I forgot, whatever it was, like a second at the most. or It was really a tiny margin. And when they came across the finish line, they had actually tied four runs over, I think, two days or whatever. 
and they had tied their times down to the hundredth of a second. And the best part about it was when, when they realized they had tied, the Germans who were had finished and they were standing up there, like, they went nuts. And they're just like, Rah! and they go running down to the Canadians in the bobsled. And they're like trying to hug them and trying to like pick them up out of the bobsled and stuff. And the Canadians are like, what the heck is going on here? And, uh, but it was, they were so excited and they did joint interviews afterwards and they were all hugging each other and arms around their shoulder. I mean, it was so awesome. There has been so many displays of sportsmanship in this particular Olympics that, um, you know, it's just, it's just refreshing to see. And it's just really, really cool. You see a lot of competitors that are very gracious towards their, um, other competitors, you know, their opponents and whatnot. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just really, really cool to see. And then lastly, but not leastly, um, I've told you guys before that my favorite event is biathlon slash cross, cross country. And we've never meddled in either event. And today, apparently, a woman got the gold medal, an American woman got the gold medal in, a, in some kind of event in cross country. Um, I haven't watched the cross country events the last couple of days. I got stuff to catch up on, but um, pretty much, I think, between the hockey game periods and whatnot, I'm going to try and watch the, uh, that cross country events because I'm super excited. That is so awesome. Um, that's amazing because that's just, you know, that's decades of not getting a medal and somebody finding medals and it's a gold and that's just amazing did i finish everything yeah so the next time around by the time you guys see me i'm gonna have galaxies i'm gonna be able to see well i can see you guys just fine but um i might be able to stitch a little bit faster hoping hoping for it um but yeah that's pretty much it i'm not i'm holding off on grid until i get my new glasses and um but I'm going to be working on, I don't know, something, something tonight. But I'm hungry. It's time to eat dinner. Time to upload this video. And you guys will see it tomorrow. So happy stitching. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great rest of February. I'll see you this weekend with another uh, stitch with me video. And I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So we'll just see what happens. All right. Take care. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye.